Sports. We are The D-backs have jetted out to the coast, weaving in a long road trip. We're in California for the next nine days, L.A., San Francisco, and Anaheim. And we start tonight at Chavez Ravine, where the D-backs are within striking distance, less than five games behind L.A. in the division, but still looking for a way to win in this ballpark. And tonight, they'll try and do it against a former D-back on Fox Sports Arizona. Good evening from Dodger Stadium, and welcome to the broadcast. Steve Perthune, Bob Brenly along the way. It's the Diamondbacks and the Dodgers, the first of three here. And, Bob, if the Diamondbacks are going to make a move in this division like we know they're capable of, they have got to find a way to win in this ballpark. Yeah, this has been a real house of horrors recently for the Diamondbacks playing here at Dodger Stadium. They haven't pitched particularly well. They haven't scored enough runs to win. I mean, think about it. Paul Goldschmidt has an eight-game hitting streak in this ballpark. He always hits well against the Dodgers. If not for him, those numbers would be even worse. Well, your pitching matchup in tonight's series opener for the Diamondbacks. It's the former Dodger, Ruby De La Rosa, and for L.A., the former D-back, Mike Bolsinger, who's got a really good curveball apparently this year. And Bob has looked nothing like the guy we saw last year in Arizona. Yeah, one and six last year with a five and a half ERA and uh, probably pitched worse than those numbers indicate. But this year with the Dodgers, he's whittled his arsenal down, basically living with a cut fastball and a curveball, and he's had some success in the early going. So it's De La Rosa and Bolsinger, the D-backs of the Dodgers, first of three here in L.A. on a big day for the Diamondbacks organization with the number one pick, the Arizona Diamondbacks select. Find out next. By Lone Butte Casino. We're in for more winning moments at Lone Butte Casino. 
And buy Jack in the Box. Taste the new black pepper cheeseburger today, only at Jack in the Box. Diamondbacks will be spending the next week and a half in the state of California. We start tonight in Los Angeles against the Dodgers. Jody Jackson with you inside the Diamondbacks dugout here as we focus on the game. But big news coming from New York today. All eyes in the baseball world on the Major League Baseball draft. And the Diamondbacks with the number one overall pick in the draft. And, of course, speculation over a lot of the top players of the last few months on who they would take. The announcement came from Commissioner Rob Manfred. With the first selection of the 2015 MLB draft, the Arizona Diamondbacks select Dansby Swanson, a shortstop from Vanderbilt University in Nashville, Tennessee. There you have it, Dansby Swanson. There is the bio, a junior out of Vanderbilt, 21 years of age, grew up outside Atlanta, Marietta, Georgia, and he's been an outstanding player for the Commodores. Last year, the MVP of the College World Series. Today, in fact, they're off to Omaha after he doubled and homered, scored the winning run in the game. Has all the leadership and work ethic and the great characteristics that the Dimebacks were looking for in their top pick. So more on that throughout the night, throughout our broadcast. Eighth round pick Paul Goldschmidt has been a Dodger killer. Will he continue that as Adrian Gonzalez, a former number one overall pick for the Dodgers? And for L.A., your Arizona Ford starting pitcher, it's Mike Bolsinger, a D-backs draft pick, 15th round out of Arkansas five years ago. Disappointing results in 10 big league appearances with the Diamondbacks last year. Much better this season here in L.A. Here's his former teammate, A.J. Pollock. He's doing the same stuff we're used to. He's throwing a his fastball would probably be his last pitch. You know, he's throwing a lot of other stuff. Um, really just... Any county could throw anything, so that's what we're gearing up for. And uh, maybe as the game goes on, we could get him out of that. Um, but you know, we're you know, we're gonna have a simple approach off him, and then just hopefully get some good at bats. Well, the numbers, Bob, on Mike Bolsinger, folks here raving about his curveball. Yeah, he's been really good, as I mentioned in the open, with the cutter and the curveball almost exclusively. You heard AJ Pollock talking about his full arsenal. He does have a slider, a changeup. A four-seam fastball, but uh, the numbers would say he's going mostly cutter curveball this season. Well, Dodger Stadium really has been a house of blues for the D-backs. They have lost 10 of their last 11 in this ballpark. And Ender and Ciarte looks at strike one. We are underway 
Will Little is the plate umpire. Now you could say batteries in the radar gun tonight. You just need to turn it on every half inning when Ruby's out there because Mike Bolsinger is not going to light up a radar gun. All right, a bunt for a base hit. Turner comes in, and Ciarte can't quite beat it out. A nice play by Justin Turner, who is essentially the new regular third baseman now that Juan Uribe has been traded to Atlanta. Center fielder number 11, A.J. Pretty nice Mala. play by Turner right there. That's an absolutely perfect bunt by Ender Inciarte. And the throw just does get him as he lunged for the bag down there at first. It's a hot night here, summer-like conditions, midsummer. Uh, they've had a little bit of a heat wave here in L.A., so it is very warm down there on the field. A.J. Pollock now. First pitch swinging, pops it up. Very shallow right center field. Howie Kendrick calling for it. Peterson calls him off from center. And quickly two outs. The lineup for Chip Hales, Arizona Diamondbacks. Well, we've seen Ender Inciarte at the top. He'll be in left field. A.J. Pollock out in center. First Paul Goldschmidt at first base. He loves this ballpark. Yasmani Tomas back in right field tonight with Jake Lamb at third. Chris Owings at second base. Wellington Castillo doing the catching. Nick Ahmed at short. And Ruby De La Rosa, the right-hander on the mound. Goldie hitting 343 for the year. And tied with Giancarlo Stanton for the Major League RBI lead. He also leads the majors in on base percentage behind only Bryce Harper and OPS. Now we'll watch uh, Bolsinger here this first at bat of the ball game, even with nobody on and two outs in the inning. I'd be surprised if he gives Goldie anything too good to hit. Randall sliding out off that outside corner on the first two deliveries, a cut fastball and a curveball, neither one close to the zone. As you mentioned, Bob, Goldie has always hit well here in this ballpark, a career 345 hitter at Dodger Stadium. And in 29 games here, nine homers and 25 runs batted in. 2-0 pitch. Goldie has walked 14 times in his last eight games. Eight of those walks have been intentional. I'm feeling that number's going to change shortly. That's kind of why I went there because <laughs> well, he dropped the curveball in there first strike. Hasn't seen a whole lot so far from Bolsinger. Goldie sitting on 99 career homers. Curveball. A one hopper to Turner at third. A good start for Mike Bolsinger. He works a one, two, three first. We are underway in Los Angeles. Former Dodger Ruby De La Rosa coming up.
Ford starting pitcher tonight, Ruby De La Rosa, who began his career with the Dodgers, and now he's here pitching against them for the second time in six weeks. We asked Chip Hale earlier today, what is the key for De La Rosa's success tonight? Just control the counts. He's, that's his biggest deal. If he gets behind, um, doesn't matter if his fastball is 97 miles an hour, they can hit it. So he has to control the counts, use his change up, and uh, you know, mix in his breaking ball when he can. So uh, we know he can do it. Uh, just needs to keep his uh, wits about him. I think he sometimes he gets frustrated out there and just tries to blow people away instead of you know, kind of backing off. Well, be careful with Jock Peterson. Already 17 home runs for the rookie center fielder. The numbers on Ruby is 12th start, looking for his fifth win. The ERA has gone up in each of his last three starts. He's had four straight no decisions, but three of them, Bob, have been Diamondbacks wins. And of all the guys in the starting rotation for the D-backs, Ruby might be that guy that extends deep into the ball game today. If he can keep the pitch count down early, Ruby's a guy that can maintain his velocity and his sharpness deep into a ball game. One thing about Jock Peterson in the leadoff spot, you're in immediate trouble. At just under 260 and 17 homers, he pops this one up along the right field line. Yasmani Tomas is out there, and that's the first out. Take a look at the lineup for Don Mattingly, Los Angeles Dodgers. Peterson will be in center field, leading off, just popped up to right field. Justin Turner with a nice defensive play. He'll be at third base. Adrian Gonzalez at first, Howie Kendrick at second base. Yasmani Grandal doing the catching. Alex Guerrero in left field today. Andre Ethier in right. Jimmy Rollins at short, and Mike Bolsinger, the right-hander, on the mound. No Yasiel Puig in the lineup for Mattingly. He came back from a hamstring issue over the weekend against the Cardinals. You'll note bottom of the uh, graphic here. The first time through the lineup will give you where each player was drafted on this MLB draft day. Diamondbacks have another pick today. They pick, uh, I believe it's 43rd. And right now, uh, Kansas City is picking at 33, so the Diamondbacks with their second pick today, about 10 slots away. We'll keep you posted on that. After taking Dansby Swanson, first overall out of Vanderbilt. Not only keeping an eye on the Diamondbacks picks, but possibly anybody from the state of Arizona. Justin Turner. Hitting over 300 again in L.A. He's homered five times already. Hit just seven all of last year. And he pops this up, foul ground. Wellington Castillo will give it a look. And it's just over the screen on a play. Hey, Rob Reiner in the house, meathead. <laughs> well, hopefully, Ruby can stifle the Dodger offense tonight, Bob. I get the rear all in the family reference here. So we continue to nail that 18 to 22 demo. <laughs> Turner, base hit to center. First baseman, number 23. Well, here's Adrian, Adrian Gonzalez. A former number one overall pick by the Marlins in the draft. That was 15 years ago out of high school in Chula Vista, California. And now fifth in the league in hitting at 330. Fourth in the league in OPS. And no player in baseball has more doubles or extra base hits than Adrian Gonzalez. Once again, the Diamondbacks have the shift on for Gonzalez. Nick Ahmed all by himself on the left-hand side. The 0-1 misses, and it's even one ball and one strike. When Gonzalez doesn't hit, the Dodgers usually don't win. That was the case this weekend. They lost three of four here against St. Louis. And Gonzalez did not have an RBI in that series. And for the Diamondbacks, this is their third series in their last five against a first-place ball club. Played the Cardinals and then... Brewers and the Braves not in first place, but the Mets and now the Dodgers, all first place teams. Three of the last five series. Their offense has really struggled. 
Gonzalez, no RBIs in four games against the Cardinals. Only three hits, two of them were singles. In fact, the Dodgers scored a total of just six runs in that series. Their only win was Saturday when Kershaw pitched. They won 2 0. And he was, well, typical Kershaw. Eight innings, one hit. He had 11 strikeouts. And he seems to be back. <laughs> I would say so. 2 and 1 to Gonzalez. In the air, right center field, and that one drops in. Turner will head for third. And De La Rosa in immediate trouble. First and third, one out. A little soft line drive out there to right center. Gonzalez caught it right off the end of the bat. Turner had a real good read over there at first base. He knew that ball was going to drop in in front of A.J. Pollock, so easily turns the corner and ends up at third base. Howie Kendrick, the second baseman, his first season in Dodger Blue after nine years across town with the Angels. 284 and five homers. He's been battling a knee injury for the last week or so. Kendrick has had only one at bat since last Wednesday. It's been a right knee sprain. Injured last Wednesday at Colorado. It's been pretty stiff since, he says, but he's been able to move around enough to avoid the disabled list. MRI came back fine. No structural damage. It's just sore right now. And he shakes off the rust with an RBI single to center. Dodgers with three straight singles against Ruby De La Rosa, and they take a 1-0 lead. Because of that knee and the fact he's slow getting out of that right-handed batter's box, uh, Kendrick is a good double play candidate, but not when he hits line drives into center field. Here comes Mike Harkey with a slow walk to the mound. Not what they were hoping to see. This is a momentum stealer right here. Mike Harkey taking his time to get out to the mound. He'll probably stay on the mound as long as home plate umpire Will Little will allow him just to try to take some of the momentum away from this Dodgers offense. Something to say and said it and on his way back to that first base dugout. Didn't need a visit from the home plate umpire. Well, now with Gonzalez at second and Kendrick at first, a run in. He'll work to the catcher, Yasmani Grandal. Hitting 275 with five homers this year. Last time the D-backs saw Yasmani Grandal, it was the last at bat of the last game we played here. That was May 3rd. He hit a walk-off homer in the 13th inning and beat the Diamondbacks 1-0 to complete the L.A. sweep. This was the game winner on that Sunday afternoon off Evan Marshall. Said he knew Marshall liked his fastball, went up there looking for it, and got one. Yeah, that was that series where the ball was just absolutely flying out of here. I would imagine it'll be more of the same here tonight with the warm weather. The fly ball to deep right center field, but playable for Pollock. Gonzalez, with uh, very little speed, will hold it second, and there are two outs. Left fielder. Number seven. Ruby can Alex limit the Guerrero. damage. Two down now for Alex Guerrero. Getting the start in left field. Guerrero and Turner have been sort of splitting time at third base. Guerrero plays some left. Puig not in the lineup tonight, so Ethier's in there. It's Turner at third, Guerrero in the outfield. 283 and 10 overs. there for a strike 0 one we were talking about the homers flying out of Dodger Stadium last time we we're here the first 18 games here at Dodger Stadium this ballpark gave up 49 home runs 30 by the Dodgers over the last 14 games only 18 home runs and the Dodgers have really cooled off with the long ball only nine well, 
Guerrero has been a very pleasant surprise offensively with his 10 home runs. A quick start as you see here. He homered five times in his first 22 at bats this year, but since then the power has cooled off. He's a free swinger. You don't have to throw him a strike to get him out, especially once you get to a two strike count. Right there. One and two now. He's only walked five times this year, over 100 at bats on the season. Good slider there from Ruby. Ruby in his last start worked with Jared Salta Lamakia after Salty arrived from Triple A Reno. And he's in there tonight with the other new Diamondback catcher, this time it's Wellington Castillo. Talked about how hard it is on all these new catchers. I'm sure there's an adjustment for the pitcher as well in these situations. Salty, high and tight with the Moss. Yes, it's in there. Called strike three, says Will Little. And De La Rosa strands two, but the Dodgers get one. They lead it 1 0. Take on the Padres. It's a 7 10 start, and you can pick up this D backs backpack courtesy of Gila River Casinos. Get your tickets right now at dbacks.com. We're in Los Angeles. Steve Berthew, Bob Brentley, and Jody Jackson with you. Second inning now. D backs trail the Dodgers 1 0. Howie Kendrick, an RBI single. And here's Yasmani Tomas to lead off the second against former Diamondback Mike Bullsinger, who had a 1 2 3 8 pitch first. Tomas, 338 and a homer. 21 RBIs. Chip Hale said before the game here today, they looked at the matchups. They went with Tomas and they were against Bolsinger. So David Peralta sits tonight. That's just kind of the way it worked out, Chip said. Off Bolsinger. It rolls to second. Kendricks there to collect it. And he throws out Tomas. One away. Check on Mike Bolsinger. Down to a knee already out there to the first base side of the mound. Don Mattingly and the Dodgers training staff heading out to take a look. Tomas hits a lot of balls right back up the middle of the field. This one, unfortunately, ricochets right to Howie Kendrick for the easy out of first. Mike 
Bull Singer last year with the Diamondbacks. Nine starts, one relief appearance. Didn't really go very well. Here's one more look. Got him somewhere on the outside of the left leg there. Kind of a delayed reaction. Looked like it didn't bother him too much initially, but then ended up going down to a knee after the play was over. Bull Singer's numbers with the D-backs last year. Sold to the Dodgers last November and has been, for the most part, a different pitcher with L.A. A 1-1-5 ERA through his first five starts, but had a rough time of things his last time out. That was Wednesday at Coors Field. And he'll take a couple of warm-up tosses. And Bolsinger said, you know, no hard feelings about the way things ended with the Diamondbacks. He said baseball's a business. D-backs made a business decision. And he admitted he didn't think he was pitching to the caliber he should have been pitching with the Diamondbacks and took the responsibility for that. He said that was just him not putting himself in a good spot. Well, there were a lot of guys on the team last year that uh, didn't play up to their capabilities. And sometimes it just takes a change of scenery. Go somewhere else. You hear different words to describe the same things you're going through from a new pitching coach, Rick Honeycutt. And something obviously struck a nerve with Mike Bolsinger. He'd been a different cat this year. Yeah, he said he told himself when he went to the Dodgers AAA club, you know, just pitch well, good things will happen. And it's been going pretty well. Jake Lamb, 353 in a homer. Jake 0 for 4 with a strikeout yesterday against the Mets. His first start for the Diamondbacks since April 18th. Coming off that stress reaction in his left foot that kept him out 42 games. 1 and 1. Yes, he went. Tony Randazzo at third, a ball and two strikes. Yeah, Bolsinger right now is one out away from a 20-inning scoreless streak here at Dodger Stadium. And there's the out. Randall completes the strikeout. Five up, five down so far for Bolsinger. Second baseman, number 16. Brings up Chris, Chris Owens. Owens. CO at 250, couple of home runs. And comes into this road trip riding an 11-game hitting streak. That's a career high. First round pick by the Diamondbacks back in 2009 out of Gilbert High School in South Carolina. CO was a 400 hitter as a high school senior. He led his team to a pair of South Carolina State Championships drafted by the Diamondbacks. Mike Bolsinger was asked last month, you know, what's so different for you this year compared to last year? And he said, I don't know, <laughs> which was kind of reflective refreshingly honest you know he said some people have been asking him you know to be honest he has no idea something just clicked in his head he said and he got locked in and that's really he says the best way to describe it he's locked in well, I think anytime a guy has a breaking pitch whether it's a hard slider or that big over the top curveball that Bolsinger throws if you can command a breaking pitch especially when you're behind in the count you can have success in the big leagues and Bolsinger's always had a real good curveball, but he hasn't always commanded it as well as he has this year. A ball and two strikes on Chris Owings. And he chases that one. Two strikeouts for Bolsinger after an eight pitch first. He works a one, two, three second. He's got a one nothing lead.
by single, the only run of the game so far. And now after a 20-pitch first, another 20-pitch first inning by a Diamondback starter. Andre Ethier, a lead off the second against Ruby De La Rosa. It's remarkable. You think just by the percentages that you'd face somebody in the first inning that hits balls at somebody, a quick five or six pitch inning, even a 10 or 12 pitch inning. But Diamondback starters really have struggled in that first. So here's Ethier now, a resurgent season in L.A. He had an opportunity with the, some of their outfield injuries, and he has really taken advantage. 282 on pace for a 23 home run season. Hasn't hit that many since he was an all-star in 2010. As you saw there, an Arizona State product, second round pick by the Gays in 03. Thank Paul Krause, who did a great uh, job on all our graphics, getting those uh, draft picks and draft selections, draft information on the graphics. Nice job, Paul. We're all about the information here, dude. Right, there's no shortage of information when it comes to baseball. 2-0. <laughs> a roller to Goldie up the first baseline. De La Rosa covers one of them. On the day of the draft, Andre Ethier had scrambled eggs and bacon for breakfast. Good stop. Number 11. Well, here's a guy that could uh, use some spinach or something. Some Wheaties. <laughs> Jimmy Rollins. I mean... He's hitting 207 this year. He does have six homers, but he just has not contributed offensively at all and is really in a free fall in Don Mattingly's lineup. He's down to the eighth spot. Started all four games in their previous series against the Cardinals. Had only a couple of singles. Dodgers lost three of four there. Rollins has been almost non-existent offensively at the age of 36. It can leave you quickly. I'm not saying that it has left Jimmy Rollins. This could just be a, uh, an extended slump up there at the plate. But as I mentioned to you, I picked up the Sunday paper. And for the qualified hitters in the National League, last and next to the last were Chase Utley and Jimmy Rollins. Yeah. Yeah, we were in Philly. Chase Utley yeah. really slumping down there. Here's his former Philly middle infield combo. Fly ball to center. And an easy play for Pollock. Two down to the second for Ruby, and here's Bolsinger. Pitcher, number 46. Well, the Dodgers Bolsinger. come into this series leading the National League West just to four and a half games ahead of the Diamondbacks as we open this three-game set. Bolsinger, the Arkansas Razorback, a Diamondback draftee. Heard Chip Hale say Ruby has got to control the counts. Well, throwing strike one to only two of nine batters is not how you control the count. He's been behind all night. He's on this one. And he throws out Bolsinger. So a nice one, two, three second for Ruby De La Rosa, who's retired now five in a row. Diamondbacks trail the Dodgers, one nothing.
is brought to you in part by Card Power from Arizona Federal Credit Union. Now that's the power of us. And by Oregano's, your neighborhood pizza joint. Dodger Stadium, Mike Holsinger, the former D-back out there with a one nothing lead as Wellington Castillo sets to lead off the third. Ruby De La Rosa had a 20-pitch first inning for the Diamondbacks. Mike Holsinger so far has thrown 18 pitches through two innings. He's retired all six he's faced, and here comes Castillo to lead it off for the Diamondbacks. After that, Nick Ahmed and then Ruby De La Rosa, the former Dodger. Yeah, one thing we noticed with Mike Bolsinger uh, so far in the ballgame today, a little difference in his delivery. Uh, when he pitched for the Diamondbacks, he had a very pronounced pitch. If you watch his left foot on the left, that was Mike pitching for the D-backs last year. Watch the left foot. Kind of stalled and stopped and then came up and went through with the rest of his delivery. This year, he's really smoothed that bottom of his delivery out. This lifts that leg up, and he's ready to go to home plate, maybe improving his command a little bit. I don't know. And also, he's wearing a lower number this year. He's 46. He was 49 with the D-backs, which could have something to do with it. You and the numerology. <laughs> well, his ERA has gone down a lot, I can tell you that. Yeah. Here's Castillo. Ball one to Wellington, 163 on the air and three home runs. And, of course, they had the big two-out, two-run homer in the seventh on Saturday night, his first hit as a Diamondback. One for six with the D-back so far with four strikeouts. This is on the ground right to Rollins at short. One away. Shortstop, number 13. Nick Ahmed. Hey fans, anytime the D-backs score five runs or more, Taco Bell is giving away three free tacos with the purchase of a large drink between four and six the following day at participating locations. Nick Ahmed batting 212 with three homers. Second round pick out of UConn by the Braves. Acquired, of course, in the Justin Upton deal. That was a good UConn team that Nick was on. Had a whole bunch of first-round picks on that Husky team. George Springer taken by the Astros. Matt Barnes, the pitcher by the Red Sox. Mike Olt, the third baseman by the Texas Rangers. Bunch of cold-weather players. Mike Bullsinger has shown a very good curveball since he's been with L.A. And they've been very impressed. A.J. Ellis says his curveball gets to the apex of its point and then comes down like a roller coaster. That's a good look right there. And Ellis has said what's also been effective about that curveball, it gains speed at the top, he says, which is something you really don't see often said most curveballs feel like they kind of decelerate as they come into the catcher, but Bullsingers, for whatever reason this year, feels to Ellis anyway like it actually picks up speed as it's coming into the hitting zone. A flare out to right, Ethier. Eight up, eight down so far for Bullsinger. Pitcher number 12. I think curveballs, Bob, is they, you know, come in kind of loopy or slow, but this guy's got some bite apparently this Off year. Off-speed pitch, you know, a slower delivery, and yeah, certainly the velocity is a lot less, but I think Mike Bolsinger gets a lot of rotation on that ball to get it to break straight down to the ground the way he does. Well, the curveball has always been his best pitch. Here's Ruby De La Rosa now. Dodgers called him in November and told him, hey, we just picked you up after the Diamondbacks had designated Bullsinger for assignment. And he said that's what they told him. We like the spin on your curveball. We like the way you change speeds with your fastball. And he still gets by with location and movement. There's no velocity here. But it's a, he'll throw that curveball early in counts and get ahead. He's ahead of De La Rosa, 0-2. And there's a call, strike three. Third strikeout for Bullsinger who's retired all nine he's faced. The sun setting here in L.A. Diamondbacks trailing one nothing.
Some home runs. Uh, we've struck him out, like you say, but uh, he seems to come through when they need it. Uh, so we're going to be very careful with him. Chip Hale talking about Jock Peterson, the sensational Dodgers rookie who has 17 home runs on the season so far. Not your typical leadoff man, but Peterson has an, such an interesting approach at the plate. If you watch that stance, it's so calm, pre-swing, kind of the bat straight up and down. Of course, he's from the left-handed side. And, you know, hitting coach Mark McGuire said he likes the little wrinkle in spring training. He stopped coiling the bat at all, so there's a lot less chance to miss. And maybe cut down those strikeouts with such little movement pre-swing, guys. Thank you, Jody. Here is Jock Peterson. What a rookie season it's been. 17 home runs. He's already homered four times in eight games this month. He flat out his first time. Shift is on again. And Jody's talked about his work with Mark McGuire, keeping those legs a little quieter. Peterson always, also I should say, uses a big bat. He's got a big bat up there, 34 ounces, 34 inches. It's in fact one of the biggest bats in baseball. Yeah, the length is not extraordinary, but the weight is. Most guys nowadays use bats that weigh 30, 31, 32 ounces at the most. Peterson using a 34, 34. Uh, the theory being the wood's a little denser. A heavier bat if you can get some bat speed through the hitting zone uh, the weight of the bat itself will help propel the ball he's an all-or-nothing guy he's either going to hit a home run strike out or walk and that's pretty much it he will strike out a ton 37 percent of his at bats this year he's punched out it's, it's very much all or nothing but that bat is uh, especially for a young guy Andre Ethier uses one of Peterson's bats to warm up with. It's, it's like a donut for him. It's so heavy. Three and two from De La Rosa. Hard to first. Goldie's there. One away. That's six in a row. We're tired by Ruby. Number 10, Justin Turner. Turner had a couple of hits in the loss to the Cardinals last night. Drove into and he's off to a good start in June, hitting over 320 this month. And he's been really good for the Dodgers. I mean, it was a very nice pickup for them. You kind of really didn't notice him when he was with the Mets. But since he hooked up with LA before last season, Turner. Well, he hit 340 in over 100 games last year. Played a lot of third while Uribe was injured. And he's hit well enough this year that the Dodgers figured, well, we can move Uribe to Atlanta, which they did. And Turner said the only thing that really changed for him was he lost the best teammate on the planet. People here love Uribe. But with or without him, the chemistry in the clubhouse, we're told, is much better this year regardless. Turner is far back in that right-handed batter's box, right in that little corner in front of the catcher. Ouch. He's got the ankle guard on, but as we've seen so many times already this year, doesn't always hit the padded areas. Oh, man, that got him up above the knee. On that left leg. He's still down. Dodgers head trainer Stan Conti's been on the field a little more than he would like already tonight. Had to tend to Mike Bolsinger out on the mound when Yasmani Tomas hit him with a grounder, and now Turner down. It's kind of been this way lately for the Dodgers. They've uh, hit a bump in the road here. They've lost eight of their last 12 games. Here's another look. Including three of four against the Cardinals here in the previous series. They might have caught him right on the kneecap. Somebody asked Don Mattingly why Turner just doesn't play third base every day. And Mattingly said because of his knees. So 
I mean, Mattingly's out there watching closely. Turner said there's nothing wrong with his knees. They're fine. But Mattingly remembers what he went through. He had back problems his whole career. You know, Turner's not a super young guy. He's 30 years old. But uh, Mattingly's been very careful with him not to push him too much. It's kind of like, you know, three on, two off, two on, one off kind of a thing. But he's back in there with an 0-2 count against Ruby. Oh, he has to be okay. They've already traded Juan Uribe. <laughs> he's in Atlanta. Well, they have Guerrero, who's in left field tonight. He plays third as well. Kike Hernandez has done a good job playing all over the infield for them. And coming over in that trade also are Ber Alberto Cayaspo, so they have some options. Left center field, A.J. coming in, long run, and he runs it down. See how Turner's running here. Not great. Number 23, Adrian Gonzalez. We also have Hector Oliveira, who's at AA Tulsa right now, the latest Cuban signee for this organization. So, now, Sometimes the worst thing you can do when you foul the ball off a joint, and in this case the left knee, is, uh, is, is sit down. It'll start to stiffen up. You'll get some swelling in there. See if Turner keeps moving around over in that third base dugout. That sounds like the voice of experience. Oh. <laughs> Adrian Gonzalez. I have to get up and walk around the booth for crying out loud. <laughs> well, there's not much room in here. This is an older ballpark. They are crammed in. 0 and 1. Little roller with the shift on. Owens from the outfield grass. Lots of time to get Gonzalez. And Ruby De La Rosa after giving up a run in the first has now retired eight straight. D backs trail at 1 0. Inning. We've talked a lot about the Mike Bolsinger curveball in the early going here tonight, and he's had it working early. Got a strike out of Jake Lamb bouncing it in the dirt. Chris Owens chases one off the plate away. And then Ruby De La Rosa frozen by a curveball on the inside corner. I was talking about the ability to throw that pitch for a strike when you want to and bounce it in the dirt when you want to, and it appears that Bolsinger's doing that much more efficiently this year. He's got three strikeouts. He's retired all nine that he's faced. All three of the strikeouts tonight coming on that curveball. Here's Ender and Ciarte, who grounded out his first time up to lead off the ball game. Adrian Gonzalez watches a lot of Bolsinger, obviously, from his first base spot. And Gonzalez says that Bolsinger's off speed stuff, that curveball, breaks late, so it looks like it's out of the strike zone. And then it'll break in. Or it looks like it's in the zone, it'll break out. At late life. He's ahead of Enciarte. No balls and two strikes.
play down the left field line. Ender has it safely in four straight games, 12 of his last 14. With the D-backs still looking for their first base hit tonight. Now we Kendrick at RBI single of the first, the only run of the game so far. Backs are making their second draft pick today as we speak, 43rd overall. Luis Gonzalez and JJ puts at the podium in New York at this very moment announcing the selection. And it is Alex Young, a left hand pitcher from TCU. So they get Dansby Swanson, the Vanderbilt shortstop, at 1 1 overall, and with their second pick, 43rd. They get a left hand pitcher from TCU, Alex Young. It's like a, kind of a high leg kick, a funky sidearm three quarter delivery. Alex Young. Ender, base hit. Diamondbacks on the board. So Ender's hit safely in five straight. Lead off man on in the fourth. Number 11. AJ hey, fans, Paul. tonight's cold hard facts brought to you by Clean Crisp. Coors Light. You mentioned all the numbers, BB. How about war? What is it good for? Wins above replacement. Look at this. Absolutely everything in the game of baseball. Goldie and AJ right behind Bryce Harper. Overall, now remember, war is all inclusive. It's meant to really create one number that encompasses everything, offense, defense. So according to war, Goldie and Pollock are the second and third best players in the National League this year. Gonna get AJ in the All Star game. Don't forget, D back nation. Hashtag AJPASG. AJ Pollock All Star game. And rock the vote online. No paper ballots this year. It's all online. And AJ came into the game 322, eighth best in the National League. His OPS ranks him in the top 20. Ender 8 for 12 in a stolen base attempt this year. Siarte holds AJ. Big swing at that one. And as we heard him talk, Bob, before about Bolsinger. He will throw any pitch at any time and any count, so you can't really go up there looking for one. No, not really. I mean, this is one of those standard approach pitchers. You're ready to hit his fastest pitch, which is that cutter in the high 80s, and then try to adjust to that curveball as quickly as you can pick it up out of his hand. By the way, Alex Young, who the Diamondbacks just selected at 43rd overall, the left-hand pitcher out of TCU, pitched tonight for the Horn Frogs against Texas A&M. Struck out 10 in six and a third. It's a big game for them, and he had a big night. Right now, TCU leads 4-2 in the ninth inning. The winner of that game goes to Omaha. Ansby Swanson and Vanderbilt booked their trip earlier today. Now the scouting report on Alex Young out of TCU. He has a fastball that sits 89 to 93. A really good breaking ball and a, a, a changeup which has really come on for him. He was a reliever. Uh, they sent him to the Cape Cod League to become a starting pitcher this year, and he's trying to add that third pitch, the straight changeup, to go along with the other two good pitches. And TCU's got a great program. Of course, they produce. Matt Carpenter, the Cardinals' terrific third baseman. Brandon Finnegan was selected by the Royals in the draft last year and ended up pitching in the postseason for Kansas City. So the Diamondbacks went with two college players, a position player in Swanson, a pitcher in Young, both from some of the top college programs in the country. Ball strike three, fourth strikeout for Mike Bolsinger and A.J. Pollock in his words with Will Little. Fastball down and in. 44. Right on that spot, bottom of the knees, inside corner. Here's Goldie who grounded out his first time. 
Enciarte at first, one away. And all the walks, intentional and otherwise, have really worked against Paul Goldschmidt. We've seen Goldie get pitched around a lot this month. He's played seven games in June. He's only had two extra base hits all month. So he's not getting anything to hit. And that's after he hit 365 in May with 10 homers. He's 250 through the first week of June. And the slugging is down about 300 points from last month. Ender wandered off the bag there, but he's just back in time, says Phil Cousin. Grandal has got a really good throwing arm. Grandal wanted to throw down there during the course of the A.J. Pollock at bat, but uh, apparently didn't get a good grip on the baseball, so he didn't make the throw, but tries to pick off Ender again. Little Singer at 40 pitches, 28 strikes. We will hear from Dansby Swanson, by the way, at some point coming up soon over the course of our ball game. Jody Jackson spoke with him during our pregame show. There's Goldie's numbers here in June, just 5 for 20. And all those walks. And when he gets a pitch to hit, he doesn't miss it. We get one here on 2-1. Tomas on deck, three balls and a strike. Everybody really agreeing that the Diamondbacks nailed their first round pick. I mean, they took the best player on the best team from one of the best programs in the country, Dansby Swanson. Just the second time, Bull Singer. There's goes in Ciarte, and the throw is not in time. Ender's got his ninth stolen base. Call him back. It's ball four. It's the worst deal. Going to say second time. Bolsinger has gone to three balls. So much. In the ball game, both to Paul Goldschmidt. And that was ball four, so no steal for NCRJ. Two on, one out now for Tomas. Another walk to Goldie. Tomas uh, was the one that hit the line shot right back at Bolsinger back in the second inning. To get him on the leg somewhere on the shin. He had to walk it off for a while, but he appears to be okay. Retired the next five he faced after that. Now, Howie Kendrick, the Dodger second baseman, kind of jockeying Ender Inciarte back to the bag, which should play right into Yasmani Tomas's hand to open up that hole on the right side of the infield, and we know he likes to hit the ball that way. Dahl and Bolsinger will talk it over here. These two have worked very well together, and Bolsinger says Grandal is the big reason. One of them, anyway, for his success with the Dodgers this year. They have been on the same page. Grandal, he says, knows what Bullsinger wants to throw. Takes a lot of the process out of Bullsinger's head when he's out there. He's able to just go up there and throw the pitch that Grandal is calling. There's a very high trust factor there between these two. In fact, Bullsinger has said there are times when he's gripping the ball. And he's already gripping a curveball, and Grandal will then call for the curveball because he knows that's where Bullsinger is and that's what he wants to throw. And they're going to take Turner out of the game down there at third. In the middle of that mound visit, wow. Trainer has come out, and Justin Turner, who fouled that pitch off what appeared to be his knee, and gentlemen, your attention, please. will limp Thank off the field. Number five, Alberto, Cayaspo. So Alberto Cayaspo will take over. At third, the former Atlanta Brave acquired in the Uribe deal. In Ciarte at second, Goldie at first. One out. And here's Tomas. The 
And hold up there, only one. Tomas has hit safely in five straight and 17 of his last 19 games. Somebody missed a sign there. Goldie took off for second. Ender did not run for third. It looked like the double steal may have been in play there. Goldie took off full bore for second base. Ender stayed put, and Goldie had to put the brakes on. That's always a tough play for the trail runner. As this pitch is bounced up there in the dirt. Nice block that time by Grandall. And uh, you see Goldie on the right of your screen. Yeah, I think it was a double steal, but Inciarte didn't get the jump he thought he needed, so Goldie had to slam on the brakes and go back to first. Runners hold, Tomas knocks it in the seats, it's one and two. You'll even notice as Goldie takes his lead off first base, he has his head kind of turned at an angle so he can not only see what happens at home plate and what happens on the mound, but he can also see the runner at second base out of his peripheral vision in case he needs to break for second. Normally, the runner at first would square up toward home plate and watch what happens as that ball gets into the hitting zone, but Coldy watching at second base to see what Inciarte is going to do. Dave McKay coaching at first. Play ball. Rollins, Kendrick, and they roll the double play. When we come back, we'll talk to Deshaun Watson about a big day for the Diamondbacks in the draft. They got a position player and a pitcher. We'll talk to Deshaun when we come back. One nothing. We are joined on the phone now live by the D-backs VP and senior VP of baseball operations, Dejan Watson. Dejan, a big day for the organization. Uh, first of all, do you feel good with what happened today, Dansby Swanson and Alex Young? We feel really, really good about where we are. We're getting Dansby as well as Mr. Young. We're fired up in the room. Derek is uh, really excited about getting Dansby. That was a guy he liked early in the year, and he stayed on him as well as the other guys in our scouting staff who went out to see him and getting Alex Young for us. We feel like it was a bonus. This guy can really pitch, and we're excited to get him in the mix as well. It seems, Dijon, as uh, Howie Kendrick leads off the fourth, that you guys got two outstanding college players from really good, solid college programs. Was that just a coincidence, or did that factor in to the decisions? I think that was part of our plan coming in, really trying to focus on some of the more advanced college players that we feel like can impact the organization as quick as possible. 
I like where we're going. Even with the trades that we've made thus far, we're bringing quality talent into the organization. And when you're able to stockpile talent, it gives us a better chance to be more successful at the major league level. And, and so we're excited about what we're doing here. You know, DJ, we've seen a number of mock drafts leading up to today. And, you know, the names at the top were always the same, sometimes in a different order, uh, projected to which team they would go to. But I would guess that as you get deeper and deeper into this draft, that's where your scouts really come into play, their ability to find those guys who are out there and maybe aren't on the front page of the sports. That's so important for our guys. And, and again, Derek changing the culture and really preaching to, to our young scouts and our, our, our veteran scouts about how we want to attack the country. It's so important that we know these guys, their makeup, their character, not only their tools and how they play, our big thing is really knowing what kind of player we're bringing into this organization. And, and Derek and, and the staff, they've done a tremendous job. And as we move forward to day two and day three, you know, again, our, our area scouts and our cross-checkers, they will really have a huge impact on what we do moving forward. Dijon, you mentioned what kind of player you're getting here. Everything that I've read, the, all the scouts, all the people that do the mock drafts, the evaluators, when talking about Dans, Dansby Swanson, they all say the same thing. The makeup is off the charts with this kid. Tell us about Dansby Swanson. With Dansby, he has this leadership quality about him, you know, on the field, in the dugout. Uh, I mean, even when he's not hitting, he's the first one out on the field, you know, giving high fives to his teammates. If someone makes an error, he's trying to pick him up out there on the field. And you watch him lead and go about his business in such a professional way. You know, those are the kind of kids you want to bring into your organization. He plays fast. His skill set is, is very solid across the board. Uh, the only area that's a little short will be the power, but but again, he picks a baseball up at shortstop. He was a second baseman coming into this year and moved over to short, and we know how difficult that can be. And he showed the country how well he could handle that transition. So we're talking about makeup and character and a guy who wants to help his team win. And, and, and again, we're looking for winning caliber ball players. Well, that's the question that's going to come up to John about Dansby Swanson because Diamondback fans are going to go, well, hold on here. We got Nick Ahmed who's just really coming into his own as a major league shortstop. Do you see Swanson staying at short or will he maybe move somewhere else? He's going to come in as a shortstop. And, and you know, those things tend to take care of themselves as we move forward with, with building out our ball club and their skills and and again, this is going to be an exciting player to have. Again, because he does have the versatility to play on either side of the bag, it's a plus for us from an organizational standpoint. Well, he certainly seemed like, not that you're conservative with this pick, but what, at 1-1, you got to get it right. And it seems like this guy had, it was the surest thing on there, like where you could say, okay, this guy is going to be a really good major league player. We felt really good about his skills and how he played. And again, we watched this guy from day one. I mean, even on Team USA, we had our... Area scouts at cross checker seeing this guy when he was on Team USA coming into the, the scouting season. We were on this guy. We didn't miss very many games. I saw myself at least three times. I know Stu saw him once or twice. So we felt like we scouted this young man and, and we knew who he was and what kind of player he, he, he is on a daily basis and, and how he, you know, again, helps grow and build his team and watching these guys and they're, they're moving on to the College World Series and we're talking about winning caliber players and he is one of them. Yeah, you know, Vandy, I'm sorry, Bob. Vandy, I said, Qualifying for Omaha earlier today. There was a big celebration that we're showing the fans yeah. right here now. And it looks like TCU might get there as well. It's pretty exciting. You know, we have a crazy matchup with our guys. Both of our guys match up against one another, so it'll be fun to watch. <laughs> yeah, DJ, I was just going to ask you, uh, it, you get deeper and deeper into the draft. Is, is there a philosophy moving forward? Uh, you knew who you wanted. You targeted your guy at number one. Had a real good pick with the second guy. But as you move forward, is there a specific position you're looking to stockpile? Or are you just looking for the best available player? Uh, what do you do from this point forward? Well, Bob, as you know, you, you can never have enough pitching. So for us, we're going to continue to look and see who's out there for us. And we're going to take the best player available, obviously. But if it's a pitcher that's leading the way, we're, we're definitely leaning towards you know, hopefully getting some more pitching in, in the fold here. Uh, if there's quality position player out there, we will not, you know, turn our back on that guy as well. So we're going to look for the best player as we move forward. We, we have our marching orders internally of what we're looking to do and what, have, what type of arms we're looking for and what type of position players we're looking for. So uh, as we finish the day-to-day, -day, we'll kind of reassess the board, uh, really focus on who we're going to pick with our first pick tomorrow morning and make sure we, we know, again, what kind of guy we're bringing into the house. I'm just glad Gonzo didn't screw this up. <laughs> <laughs> He had it under control the whole way. He and J.J. He always does. Uh, I know he had some help with J.J. Putz over there. Deshaun Watson, congratulations. Uh, we're very excited here, and I can't wait to look uh, see what happens tomorrow. Thanks for joining Guys, us. Guys, thanks so much. Appreciate your time. Deshaun Watson on a very successful draft day for the Diamondbacks, getting shortstop Dansby Swanson from Vanderbilt and left-hand pitcher Alex Young from TCU. Here's Alex Guerrero with the Dodgers. Mounting a fourth inning threat here against Ruby De La Rosa. Kendrick a leadoff single to walk to Grandal. 
And here's Guerrero who struck out looking his first time up. Two on, nobody out. Swing and a miss, and Ruby's ahead 0-2. Slider by Ruby once again starts it right on that outside corner. Looks like a hittable pitch, and by the time you swing at it, it's gone. And Ruby struggled with that 20 pitch first, but then an 8 pitch second, a 14 pitch third. He retired eight straight coming into this inning, but he's in trouble here. Two on, nobody out, and 0 2 count to Guerrero. Reaches down and drops it into left. They are going to wave Kendrick. The throw for Minciarte is offline, and the run scores. Grandal moves into third. Guerrero's at second, and it's 2-0 L.A. Mentioned that Kendrick has had a gimpy knee all week, but Low Bundy there was waving him home all the way on a ball hit to very short left field. Yeah, he should have been thrown out at home play by a wide margin there. Ender Inciarte has a good throwing arm. He was running hard toward home plate as he picks this ball up. Unfortunately, his throw to home plate stays on the foul side of the baseline right there. And once again, another Diamondbacks pitcher gets way too close to the play. Ruby De La Rosa has got to be back near the backstop backing up that play to hold those runners at first and second, but because he was standing right next to home plate, the ball got by him, and both Dodger runners advance another 90 feet. So that's a single and an RBI for Guerrero, and the runners advance on the error by Enciarte. Keep seven. going. Keep going. He just stopped over there near the left-handed batter's box and then had to turn and run all the way to the backstop when that ball got away from Wellington Castillo. in and now Ruby's really got to pull off a magic act here. Second and third, nobody out for Andre Ethier. Rondal at third, Guerrero at second, Ethier rounded out to first, his first time up. Ethier had a rough series against the Cardinals here this weekend. The Dodgers lost three of four. He went one for 11 against St. Louis and struck out six times. De La Rosa has shown a knack for keeping the D-backs in the ball game when he's out there. It's a little rocky from time to time, but of his last six starts, the Diamondbacks have won five of them. And generally, if he can avoid the home run ball, which has been a problem this year for him, he's usually okay. 1-1 one -one pitch. And two. We've seen, of course, Dodger Stadium become more of a hitter's park this year. That has cooled off as the summer has gone on. Ruby, 55 pitches, 33 strikes. But De La Rosa has allowed a pair of homers in each of his last two starts. Giving up 12 on the year. Ninety-seven misses upstairs, two balls and two strikes. Well, you mentioned the team had won five of Ruby's last six starts, and this is part of the reason why he gets a lot of run support. Only A.J. Burnett of the Pirates has had more run support since May seventh. Yeah, four straight, no decisions. Three of them D-backs wins. His last loss right here at Dodger Stadium, May first. Reaches down at the two-two and drops it into left. Rondal scores. They hold Guerrero, and it's three nothing Dodgers. Number eleven. 
couple of base hits and drive in runs. Neither one hit particularly hard. Ethier just cued one off the end of the bat. Little floater out into shallow left field. Very similar to the one that Guerrero hit out there to drive home a run. Just finding grass out there in the outfield. First four have reached here against De La Rosa in the fourth. Hendricks single, Rondal walks, singles by Guerrero and Ethier. Mike Parkey's on the phone. Jimmy Rollins flying out to center his first time. Still nobody out. Phones broke. Looked like Andrew Chafin taking off his sweatshirt out there in the bullpen. We've reached the Dodger Stadium bullpen. Your call is very important to us. I got to get the phone guy over here. Chafin will start throwing, it looks like. Hey, it's broke. Most of the phones in most ballparks in Major League Baseball, you just pick it up and it automatically rings. You don't have to dial the bullpen or anything like that. What's the number? Yeah, there, there are a couple of ballparks. You know, they have very specific directions. Dial 1-5 for bullpen. Dial 1-2 for training room. Dial 1-1 for the manager's office. But most of them are direct lines. You just pick up the phone and it rings down in that bullpen. in the bullpen where you wanted that to happen. You've reached the Giants bullpen. We can't get to the phone right now, but if you'd leave a message, we'll get back to you just as soon as we can. Fly ball right center. And that ball is gone a home run. Jimmy Rollins, his seventh, a three-run homer, and it's 6-0 Dodgers. We mentioned that a moment ago. The home run ball, once again, bites Ruby De La Rosa. Couple of cheap RBI hits in this inning, but there was nothing cheap about that blast off the bat of Jimmy Rollins. We talked about his struggles this season. Got a fastball out over the plate. Even the little guys get full extension, can hit the ball a long way. Well, Ruby De La Rosa, who had retired eight straight coming into this fourth inning, has yet to record an out here in the fourth. The first five have reached, and here's the pitcher, Mike Bolsinger. First Dodger homer here since May 27th. They did not homer at all in four games against the Cardinals here over the weekend. Well, that's a big hit for Jimmy Rollins, who really needed something. In 185 in April, 220 last month. The bat has just not shown up slumping badly. But a big three-run homer there to make it 6-0 L.A. See a very good second and third inning for Ruby. Tired the last two in the first, one, two, three innings in that second and third, but has yet to record it out here in the fourth. And he's run it full on the pitcher. Called strike three. Second strike out for De La Rosa. That's the first out in the fourth. Center fielder, Jock Peterson. Here's Jock Peterson. Well, Ruby's last loss right here at Dodger Stadium, May the 1st. Five innings, five runs on just three hits. Two of those hits in that game were homers. And Jock Peterson hit one of them. That was an 8-0 L.A. win. It's 6-0 here. And 
since that ball game. De La Rosa unbeaten in six starts. First and so far five of the fourth. Those crooked numbers never good when they're on the bottom of the scoreboard on the road. Cutting in this inning by a couple of bloops and a blast. Walk and a throwing error didn't help either. That one misses inside and De La Rosa is behind three and one. Diospo, who replaced Turner, is on deck. Adding in Turner's spot, second in the Dodger order. That's in the seats. It's full three and two. Called strike three. Hold on there, Jack. Third strikeout for Ruby. All over the strike zone. Will Little has just a slight delay when calling strike three. I think that's why we've seen so many hitters start to head down the first baseline on those three two pitches. And then he rings them up. Alberto Cayaspo, the switch hitter. And there's the strike going on. Kiaspo 213 for the year. And five for 20 since arriving in LA from the Atlanta Braves. Picked up as part of the Juan Uribe deal at the end of May. He was with Atlanta after he signed a free agent deal there last December. Spent last season in Oakland. It's just over 2.30 there with the A's. Switch hitter to the left-hand side is his power side. And he rolls one to second. Owings is there. And the fourth inning ends, but the Dodgers get five. They lead it 6-0. Dodgers and Bolsinger with an improved curveball this year and was not able to pinpoint anything mechanically that he's doing different. But one thing that he did say in late April is that he watched carefully teammates Clayton Kershaw and Brett Anderson and how they go about preparing for a game and particularly how they throw their bullpens. And he said he really did a better job of that this season and maybe that's just the maturation of a pitcher and going through it and making his debut last year with the D-backs and learning a little bit more about how to get ready to make their next start guys. 
Well, good example, certainly, to watch, that's for sure. They get some pitching here in L.A. They've had some injuries, too, which is how Bolsinger got his opportunity, and he's made the most of it. A 6-0 lead as Jake Lamb leads off the fifth. Jake struck out his first time. Huh? Still looking for his first base hit since he came back from that foot injury. And after missing 42 games. Bolsinger so far has walked one, struck out four, given up just one hit. An Enciarte single to lead off the fourth. Let's take a look at our Valley Honda keys to the ball game tonight. We talked about the Diamondback struggles here, so try to make yourself at home here at Dodger Stadium and chip away, trailing by six runs, but the Diamondbacks have 11 come from behind victories this season. Going to need one tonight. Right by Dave McKay at first. And it's one and two on Jake Lamb. Jake, a sixth round pick by the D-backs. He was a Washington Husky. Got him in the draft three years ago. Gonzalez right to him. One down. Number 16, Chris Owings. Well, this place has just been a house of blues for the Diamondbacks. Swept in their last two series here. And trying to find a way to get something going down 6 0. Here's Chris Owings. The strikeout victim his first time up. series and this road trip is an opportunity for the D-backs. They've got three here against the Dodgers. They're only four and a half back as of this moment. And then three at San Francisco, the team that's right behind L.A. in the NL West. So a chance to pick up some ground and make some noise in the division on this road trip. There you go. It's uh, that's striking distance right there, just two under 500. No one has run away from the pack in the NL West. The yeah, Giants are off tonight. They play in New York against that Mets team that seemingly found their offense uh, at Chase Field. Yeah. Giants in that series will have Madison Bumgarner, Ryan Fogelsong, and Chris Heston against the defense. 1 2 to Owings. So a chance to get something done on the road here. Eight games in nine days. We start in L.A., we go to San Francisco, then we come back here for two in Anaheim against the Angels. And then the Angels turn around and go to Chase Field for a home-and-home. -home. Two there and two at our place against Albert Pujols and Mike Trout. So get on dbacks.com and get your tickets. A chance to see Pujols, Trout, and company at Chase Field next week. All three games here in L.A. on Fox Sports Arizona. Robbie Ray goes tomorrow against Carlos Frias, who gave the D-backs fits our last time here. And then Hellickson and Brett Anderson on Wednesday. That's in there for a call. Strike three. Five strikeouts for Bullsinger. <laughs> Well, not only does home plate umpire Will Little take a while to call the pitch, but he's called a big zone tonight. That one just did nip the upper regions of the strike zone, but he's called them high, he's called them low, in and out. Swing the bat. Wellington Castillo grounded out his first time. Bolsinger rolling along here. Just one hit allowed. It was the Enciarte single in the fourth. That ended for Bolsinger. A good streak here at Dodger Stadium. He had retired 32 straight here. 23 in a row against the Padres, May 23rd. That after Jan Hervey Salarte led off the ball game with a single. And then nine straight to start tonight before the Enciarte base hit in the fourth.
And he's ahead of Castillo, one and two. 60 pitches, 39 strikes. And very efficient. Castillo strikes out. Six strikeouts for Bullsinger. He's given up just one hit. And he's got a 6 0 lead in LA. up at Chase Field Sunday June 21st Father's Day against the Padres first 10,000 dads get this D-backs dad t-shirt courtesy of Audi and then on Saturday July 4th a fireworks spectacular show following the D-backs and Rockies brought to you by Gila River Casinos don't miss either of these holiday games you can get your tickets right now at dbacks.com all the fireworks coming off the bats of the LA Dodgers so far they lead it 6-0 and Adrian Gonzalez leads off the LA fifth against Ruby De La Rosa. Gonzalez single in the first. He's one for two. Into the shift. And there's Chris Owings. Already back to cover. That's exactly what Gonzalez did in his previous event. He's one for three now. I'll tell you what, it seems like a simple thing. That's a great play by Goldie. He initially went after the ball. And then has to turn and sprint back to the base. He, Chris was throwing that ball when Goldie had his back turned to him, but lobbed it over there, timed it just perfectly so Goldie could get a foot on the bag and catch the throw for the out. One away for Howie Kendrick, who's two for two. He's got an RBI. guy. He scored a run. That at bat, a great example of what Gonzalez was talking about not too long ago and what it means to try and hit these days. And there's so much stacked up against you. And Gonzalez said, you know, hitters these days, they're dealing with better and better pitchers. They're up against more and more shifts and overshifts. And the numbers, whatever you come up with, they should mean more because you're up against so much more. Boy, Kendrick putting up some numbers. He's three for three. And Gonzalez said, you know, for instance, it's tougher for him to get a hit against the Giants than anybody else because they play him deep and they put the shift on. And their pitchers... They don't worry about velocity. They pitch to the way the defense has shifted. And when you look it up, you find out he's right. Over the last three years, Gonzalez has hit barely 210 against the Giants. But to the larger point here, it's tough to get base hits these days, Bob. It was tough to get base hits back in the old days. <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right, though. All the pull shifts and everybody, all the pitchers throwing upper 90s with wicked breaking stuff. I don't know. Uh, you know. The game tends to run in cycles where the hitters have a huge advantage and then it swings back to the pitchers and the defense. I think that's why the Diamondbacks are on the right path building around defense. Guys yeah. that can catch the ball. Don't give up unearned runs. Make the other team earn every run they get. 
As Monty Grandal walked and scored his last time. Huh? Gonzalez talking about the shifting says people ask him all the time. Well, why don't you just hit it the other way? Duh. <laughs> well, first of all, if he does that, he's just a punch and Judy hitter, he says, and that's not why they're paying him. He's not there to just kind of inside out the ball and dink it into left field. Kind of defeats the purpose. That's a fair ball down the right field line. Kendrick will head for third. Tomas picks it up in the corner. And Asmani Grandal is in its second with his seventh double. Inside corner fastball. Goldie was holding on the runner down there at first and bounced off the bag. And unfortunately, Grandal hit it right back to where he was when he started, over the base and down into the right field corner. Well, now the infield with one out is going to have to come in a bit with Guerrero the hitter. He had an RBI single his last time. We got Kendrick on third, Grandal at second, and one away. Bill says the bullpen is in pretty good shape going into this series. J.C. Ramirez starts throwing. Andrew Chafin had been throwing earlier. Funny thing about that is against the Mets yesterday, Ramirez threw 33 pitches in working the ninth inning at a couple of walks. But he is up and throwing in the Diamondback bullpen. One and one on Guerrero. Ball and two strikes. It's not Ruby De La Rosa's night tonight. Dodgers have out hit the Diamondbacks nine to one. They lead it six nothing. One, two is in there. Called strike three. Guerrero really not happy with Will Little. Like you said, Bob, that strike zone is uh, big tonight. And it looks like it's expanding. Yeah, he's called a lot of high breaking balls, which is what this was. A slider right at the top of the zone there. Uh, hitters, when they see that pitch, uh, they, they see it shoulder high coming out of the pitcher's hand and it gets into the zone. And that one appeared to just catch the top of the strike zone, but very unusual for a breaking ball to be called a strike up there. Two down now, and it's Andre Ethier who had an RBI single his last time up. And this is launched to right field and gone. Andre Ethier, his eighth home run, a three-run shot, and it's 9-0 Dodgers. We talked about the long ball, and it's been a problem, and it's an ongoing problem for Ruby De La Rosa. Change up right in the middle of the plate. Second three run homer surrendered by De La Rosa in the last two innings. The last one hit by Rollins in the fourth, and here he is. Bale just trying to get De La Rosa through this inning. His spot is due up second in the top half of the next inning. Andre Ethier on pace for a 23 home run season. For him, that would be the most he's had in five years. He's had a big year this year, given an opportunity with our outfield injuries, and he has made the most of it. 
Well, you may remember I mentioned it last time we played the Dodgers when Yasiel Puig was on the disabled list and Ethier was getting more playing time. That it'd be interesting to see what happens when everybody's back healthy. And Andre Ethier, uh, in the eyes of a lot of people, has earned the right to be the everyday outfielder somewhere in the Dodger outfield. But uh, you know they want to get Puig back in there for what he brings to the table. Of course, Jock Peterson's not going anywhere. And Alex Guerrero's been swinging a hot bat trying to get him in there. We can just back off a hamstring injury getting in the night off. Three and two on Rollins. By the way, we will stay here after the end of this inning, fans, and you'll hear from Dansby Swanson. Jody Jackson did an interview with the Diamondbacks' first overall pick. Just before our ball game tonight, we'll play that for you right after this final out. So we will stay here during the commercial break, and that's going to start right now. So Goldie takes care of Rollins. Let's stay here now in L.A. Earlier today, Jody Jackson with the Diamondbacks' first overall pick, Vanderbilt shortstop Dansby Swanson. First of all, before we get to the actual pick, what has your day been like? I can only imagine your emotions right now between winning the game and then finding out that you're the number one pick in the baseball draft. Um, honestly, it couldn't have been scripted any better. I mean, you look at the whole day and how it went up and how it went. You know, we, we punched our tickets to Omaha. You know, we played some great baseball and then the dog pile and then, you know, two minutes late I'm on the field with my family watching the draft and then that happens and I'm celebrating with my teammates, my family, the coaches, you know, all the fans are there. It's like I'm surrounded by all the people that love me and they're closest to me and I'm able to experience it with them. It's surreal. I can't even really, I mean, that's how I sum it up. It's, it's incredible. Well, we're looking at that celebration right now. And, of course, thanks to the Internet and Twitter and social media, we have all seen this now. And uh, what a special moment. What did it mean to you to have everyone there? And you talked a little bit about it, and you could see you embracing family as well on this video. Uh, it's just a blessing. You know, like I told everyone, God's so good, and he's been great to me. And just for that to be able to work the way it did uh, is, is a special moment that I'll never forget for the rest of my life. And, I'm just thankful that they were able to be here and that, you know, everyone was healthy enough to be here and just, you know, you look at the whole thing. I got my best friends with me, all my teammates, my family. Um, just a lot of emotions running through my mind right now. Well, quite a day for the Diamondbacks and Dansby Swanson. 1-1. First overall pick, the Vanderbilt shortstop. As you see there, he was the MVP of the College World Series last year. Vandy won today. They're going back to Omaha this year to defend their title led by a guy who might win uh, college baseball's Heisman Trophy, the Golden Spikes Award. And a big day for that program. Swanson, the shortstop out of Vandy, went first to the Diamondbacks. And then the Commodores had two right-hand pitchers also taken in the first round. Carson Fulmer went to the White Sox at 8, and Walker Bueller taken by the Dodgers at 24th. And we told you we'd keep you updated with uh, anything of interest in the state of Arizona. Well, uh, U of A shortstop Kevin Newman was taking in the 19th pick in the first round by the Pittsburgh Pirates. Scott Kingery, his double play combination at U of A, was taken by the Phillies with the sixth pick in the second round. Brett Lillick, a left-handed pitcher out of ASU, taken in the eighth pick in the second round by the Marlins. And here's one that hits close to home. Phil Nevin, the manager down in Reno, his son Tyler Nevin, uh, from Poway High School down in San Diego was taken with the 38th pick. And didn't write down the team. Yeah, his uh, Nev's kid is really, he's a hitter. Yeah, third baseman. Comment now. We also showed you a moment ago Alex Young, the terrific left hand pitcher from TCU, another great college program. He was the Diamondback's second pick tonight, 43rd overall. And it's funny because Swanson hit a home run against Tyler J. It was a top 10 pick by the Twins in the first round, the left-hand pitcher from Illinois. And the Commodores beat the Illini to go to the College World Series. Well, Young pitched for TCU today against Texas A&M and struck out 10 in six and a third. Yeah, Tyler Nevin, Phil's son, uh, drafted by the Colorado Rockets. Well, Phil Nevin would have liked to play course for Can you imagine? Ooh. <laughs> Would have had to rebuild the left field seats. Two and two on Ahmed, who flying out his first time. Nine nothing Dodgers. Three run homers tonight by Rollins and Ethier. 
Hey, when the D-backs win, you win at Papa John's. The day after every Diamondbacks win, you get 50% off your regular menu price online order at Papa John's. Enter promo code D-backs50 at PapaJohns.com. I heard John Watson tell us that uh, Swanson will start out in the Diamondback system at shortstop. But he does have flexibility to move elsewhere. They feel that that's best for him in the organization. The current shortstop, Nick Ahmed, draws a leadoff walk in the sixth, just the second free pass issued by Mike Bolsinger. Continuing for Arizona. Number two. And now Aaron Number Hill two. will hit for Ruby De La Rosa. Aaron at 238, three homers. He is four for 13 as a pinch hitter this year with two RBIs. The first round pick out of LSU by the Blue Jays. He's back in the 2003 draft, the 13th player selected overall. So they hit for De La Rosa here, which means it's now been 14 straight games that a Diamondback starting pitcher did not throw a pitch in the seventh inning. And it's been an ongoing issue, which is why the Diamondback bullpen has thrown more innings than any other bullpen in baseball. A rough night for Ruby. And Aaron's at bats have really been infrequent lately. It's tough to get it going when he played as long as he has and done so well. And then suddenly the at bats are just not consistent. He's five for his last 40 up there. But ahead, two balls and one strike. Two and two. Well, the starters' inability to get deep into the ball game. At some point, uh, some of these starters are just going to have to wear it. Ball game like tonight, uh, just keep sending them out there. Got to give that bullpen a little bit of a rest at some point. Bolsinger strikes out Hill. That's seven strikeouts for Mike Bolsinger. He has struck out three of the last four he's faced. Well, while we have a moment, let's take a look at this day in Major League Baseball history brought to you by Geico. June 8, 1955, after only eight games and 13 innings pitched, the Dodgers optioned a left-handed pitcher named Tommy Lasorda down to their minor league club in Montreal to activate the bonus baby, Sandy Koufax, coming off the disabled list. Now, I read a couple of great biographies, one in particular about Sandy Koufax. And he was, as you said, a bonus guy. And back in those days, if you gave a guy like a bonus like that, it was kind of like the Rule 5 draft. You had to have him on the roster because he was guaranteed money. You paid him and everything else. And so he just, as a, as a kid, he just kind of sat there and was on the team. They never used him. Hmm. And that's how he started out his career. If you go and look at Sandy Koufax's numbers, he's very quiet at the beginning of his career because he's just kind of sitting on the end of the bench. A little roller over the mound that Enciarte beats it out for his second hit. Number 11, A.J. Pollock. And Sandy Koufax, as a 19-year-old with the Brooklyn Dodgers in 55, pitched in 12 games. Next year, pitched in yeah, 16 games. 13 starts the year after that. I mean, he was in the big leagues. Let's see, he was in the big leagues it wasn't until his uh, sixth year that he did something. A.J. Pollock belts it off the wall in left center. And the Diamondbacks are going to get on the board here. Here's Ahmed, and Ciarte is in there. And it's a two run double for A.J. Pollock, his 13th of the year. Number 44, Paul Goldschmidt. We're starting somewhere, A.J. Pollock with a double to the gap in left center field on a hanging curveball that time. Third time through the Diamondbacks order. They've all had an opportunity to see everything Bolsinger throws now. And that one bangs off the wall, and Ender Inciarte just does get in ahead of the tag. Quick feet. Here's Goldie. And Jay Pollock's all-star run continues. And Jay top ten in the league in hitting. Goldie is grounded out and walked 0 for 1.
Mike Bolsinger. With that two-run double by A.J. Pollock sees his scoreless innings pitch streak here at home. And he had pitched 23 and two-thirds scoreless innings at Dodger Stadium before the A.J. double. Two and two to Goldie. See the highest slugging percentage for center fielders in either league this year. Jock Peterson atop the list given his home run surge recently, but A.J. Pollock not far behind. Well, you find A.J. littered all over the leaderboards in just about every category among center fielders. You know, and he's putting up this year, Bob, the numbers that he put up last year prior to May 31st when he was hit on the hand by that Johnny Cueto fastball. This is the same guy we saw last year. This year, fingers crossed, he's just been able to stay healthy. That'd be wonderful to watch what happens the rest of the way if he can stay healthy. But as I mentioned, he's he tied for lead in batting average among major league center fielders. He's fourth in on-base percentage. We showed you the slugging percentage. Stolen bases. Uh, any category you want to pick, A.J. Pollock is right there with the best in the game. 2-2 two, two to Goldie is down and away, and it's full 3-2 and two to loss on deck. Yeah, A.J. has always hit well in the month of May for some reason, but this year he has carried that success into June to loss is on deck. He's hitting about 380 this month, including two homers. 3-2 to Goldie is in the seats. I mean, A.J. last year, even when he finally did return, and he was on the DL from June 1st until September 2nd last year. They're cutting cut on the phone. When he came back from the DL, he reached base safely in 21 of his final 22 games. So he took some momentum from last year into this season. And you can see he's just about on the same pace. Those numbers last year ended May 31st when Johnny Cueto hit him on the hand with a fastball. Kept him out all summer. Rondal and Bolsinger. First base open. Tomas on deck. Still only one out. They'll decide what to do with Goldie here. Eight strikeouts for Bullsinger. Good meeting for the Dodgers. That curveball yeah, that curve ball yes, once again starts in the middle of the zone, ends up down low and away at the bottom of the kneecaps. Goldie right through it. As Monty Tomas is 0 for 2. to Cayaspo at third. Low throw, but Gonzalez has it. And that's the inning. But A.J. Pollock, a two-run double, gets the Diamondbacks on the board. And as we go to the bottom of the sixth in Los Angeles, D-backs trail it 9-2.
tradition comes to Fox and Fox Sports 1 for the first time. The greatest golfers in the world converge on the Pacific Northwest for a chance to stamp their names in the history books. Our exclusive coverage of the 115th U.S. Open Championship live from Chambers Bay Golf Course begins June 18th on Fox Sports 1, Fox and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Right in the Seattle-Tacoma area. The U.S. Open this year. Changes for the Diamondbacks. New pitcher as we start the home half of the sixth is the right-hander J.C. Ramirez. Mike Bolsinger leads off the inning for the Dodgers. David Peralta takes over in left field for Ender and Cigarte. Ender moves to right, replacing Asmani Tomas. And so the pitcher spot is now fourth in the Diamondback order. Peralta hits ninth. Hey partner, we got a really cool email tonight from Michael Collins, who's a, an English professor at Northern Arizona University. He's teaching this summer as part of a cultural exchange program in China. And he and his students watch on MLB.tv. They found out it's a great way to help teach English and maybe a bit about our culture. That's scary. It's a big responsibility <laughs> for you. I mean, uh, you got a lot of Chinese students over there. They're going to think that uh, all Americans just kind of eat pizza. Yeah. Watch ball games, which is probably true. And go fishing. Yeah, yeah. and go fishing. Sure. One and two. All oh, strike three. Where Little rings up Bolsinger. Oh, well, it's always nice when you get an email like that. Yeah, yeah. People Peterson. use the internet for good for a change. Tell you what, there have been, let's see, 11 strikeouts. Combined tonight, eight of them looking. So Will Little strike zone is catching both both sides off guard a bit here. Peterson struck out looking his last time up. He's over three. Peterson's hands are. Jody Jackson was talking a little bit about this earlier. She talked to Mark McGuire. Peterson with that swing, pretty quick, pretty compact, and that's what McGuire has worked on. Mostly the hands. He wants the hands in close to the body, he says. And trying to get even tighter and more efficient with that big bat, the 34-34. That's been a strike all night long. Not there, though. Staying away, two and one. I think that's a consensus among uh, National League pitchers to get Peterson out. You throw him soft stuff away, outside corner of the plate, fading away, and then fastballs in on his hands. But you better get it in there. Shift Lamb from the second base spot throws him out. So that's a this is an interesting call for people that like to score games. It's come up a lot now. We're talking about Number the five. shifting and the overshifting. That goes Number down to the book as a 5 3 put out, but he was almost on the right field line. So I, you can put an asterisk next to it, something, but it's a 5 3 in the book. And the people that are in charge of uh, positioning players in these pull shifts, uh, you have to make notes of that. Uh, you know, it was a 5-3 in the scorebook, but the third baseman was playing at second base, and you need to know that when you make up your spray charts. It's all in the bookkeeping. Kayaspo came in after Justin Turner had to leave, fouling a pitch off his own knee. Tried to stay in the game and couldn't. Had to leave midway through. So here's Kayaspo up for the second time. He's a switch hitter for his career. About 20 points better from the right-hand side. But uh, most of the power comes as a lefty. His 10th year in the big leagues. So Ramirez first out of the bullpen tonight after Ruby De La Rosa gets roughed up. 
Chip Hale said before the ball game today that David Hernandez is good to go. And they won't hesitate to use him back-to-back -back outings coming off the Tommy John surgery. This is not what the former Dodger had in mind tonight. Pop up, very shallow left. Here comes Peralta. And Ramirez works a 1 2 3 inning. We go to the seventh. D backs trail it 9 2. Arizona is brought to you in part by your Valley Honda dealer, where you'll get more standard features for less money. CenturyLink, your link to what's next. And by Mix One, great taste, no face, available at local retailers. Los Angeles, as the Diamondbacks begin a long three-city California tour, and it's not started off well to this point. They trailed the Dodgers 9-2. As they face former D-back Mike Bolsinger, who has pitched really well in L.A. so far this year and has done so again here tonight. Giving up just two runs on three hits through six. And Jake Lamb leads off the seventh. Wolsinger has walked two and has eight strikeouts. Jake so far over two. So it was a rough night for Ruby. He went five innings, gave up nine runs all earned on ten hits. Gonzalez has that one. Bolsinger will beat him to the bat. And La Rosa walked one, struck out four. And the long ball bit him again. Two homers, both three-run shots. Rollins in the fourth and Ethier. Number 16, the fifth. Chris Owens. Chris Owens. CO 0 for two. He has struck out twice. Just had another Arizona product go in the draft. Blake Perkins, an outfielder from Verado High School in uh, Taken by the Nationals with the 70th pick in the second round. Buckeye, Arizona, Colorado High School. That was an Ohio guy. You like that? Well, maybe not because you're a Bobcat. So. I guess it's all good. Big picture. Big picture. The Bobcats uh, couldn't make it out of the regional this year. They, they had a good run, though. They had a really good run. Yeah, it's good for them. I'd like to see those cold weather schools do well. We talked about it in the past. Those cold weather schools, they may not always compete at the same level as the teams in Florida and Texas and Arizona and Southern California, but I think many times the players are more fundamentally sound because that's all you've got to do. And you're in the gym practicing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, while the guys in Arizona are playing baseball 12 months a year, there's never a bad day. Back in the Midwest, and the Northeast, and the Northwest. Yeah, you have to spend a lot of your practice time in a gym or in a batting cage. Bullpen is busy for LA. Owings looks at a 3-0 pitch for strike. Is 
CL gets one in the air to left center field, but uh, Peterson is over there. Two down. Fox Sports Supports is proud to team up with AYSO, the world's largest soccer club. You can go to AYSO.org slash play to find your region and sign up for your fall team today. I haven't mentioned cold weather players. That was certainly Patrick Corbin growing up in upstate New York. And Patrick coming off Tommy John surgery made his first minor league rehab start tonight. He pitched for Visalia. And he hit 95 on the radar gun, but it was a little rusty. Patrick was chased from the ball game in the first inning, gave up four runs on four hits and walked two. But uh, the velocity and just the fact that he's pitching is certainly encouraging. All part of the process. We didn't expect him to come back and be in midseason shape. It's going to take a few outings. Get him out of the way down there. Well, I'll tell you, that at bat by Chris Owings, a perfect example of the pitcher Mike Bolsinger has become this year for the Dodgers. He fell behind 3 0 with three cut fastballs, threw a curveball for a strike 3 0, and then another curveball in the 3 1 pitch, and he did just that. Castillo reaches down and lifts that to left, but Guerrero is there, and Bolsinger works at 1 2 3 7. We stretch at Dodger Stadium. Diamondbacks down 9 2. Mike Bolsinger, former D-back, has pitched another gem for L.A. Ruby De La Rosa knocked around by the Dodgers and done in by the long ball. Rollins a three-run homer in the fourth. And Andre Ethier a three-run shot in the fifth. Homers are part of the game. They just came at the most inopportune time in the ball game tonight for Ruby De La Rosa and the Diamondbacks. A couple of three-run shots. Yeah, Ruby, nine runs all earned on ten hits in five innings, including the two three-run homers. And Gonzalez leads off the seventh against J.C. Ramirez out there for his second inning of work. Gonzalez single in the first. He's one for three. And once again, the shift is on. Twice he's hit the ball to Chris Owings, who's way out there in right field. And Owings has thrown him out from the outfield grass. A look at CO out there. Jake Lamb, the third baseman, right near the second base umpire, Jerry Davis.
Dodgers offensively this year have been really good with runners in scoring position. They were hitting 282 as a team coming into play tonight, and they've added to that. They were five for eight with runners in scoring position, with nine driven in against Ruby De La Rosa. And the nine runs given up by Ruby tonight, a career high. Adrian Gonzalez this year off to a Tremendous start. You might remember he homered five times in his first three games this year. And look at that April. 383, eight homers, but since May the 1st, he's cooled off a bit. Still just about 300, but just three home runs. And once again, he grounds into that shift on the right hand side. Lamb throws him out. And that's another 5 3 put out from second base. Got a tweet, BB, during the uh, break. Number 47. Well, one fan who said just write an S. For shift on there, circle it if you want to. So you can put 5 3 S circle you if you're scoring at home. You can put an asterisk, something to indicate that the shift was on. So that's a good suggestion if you're scoring the game at home. Howie Kendrick, 3 for 3 with 3 singles. He's got an RBI, he scored twice. One one. This is Howie Kendrick's tenth big league season. His first outside the Angels organization. We'll go to Anaheim next week, Monday and Tuesday. Acquired by the Dodgers last December for pitcher Andrew Haney. He was. And then flipped. He had been acquired by the Dodgers from the Marlins, and they flipped him to Anaheim to get Kendrick. It's like one of those house shows, you know, Property Brothers? Flip or flop. Oh, my wife loves that show. <laughs> Joan watches Flip or Flop? I watch Flip or Flop. Nice. Yeah. Property Brothers, Flip or Flop, uh, Love It or List It. Love It or List It, absolutely. All yeah. that stuff. Yeah. That, that's on at the house 24-7. And you come home from the game. Hey, we need a new kitchen. What? Have you been watching those shows again? <laughs> Three and one. The House Hunters. You know? Oh yeah, I like the International House Hunters. We need an apartment in uh, Beijing. Those are a little scripted for me though, because they all say the same thing. They walk through the door and go, "Oh wow." <laughs> Nick Gomez. This is a nice, bright room. A lot of natural light. Only $5,000 a week. Let's take a look at our T-Mobile game-changing players. The Diamondbacks had a tremendous day today in the draft. Drafted first overall. The last year's World Series MVP at the collegiate level. And Vanderbilt headed back there again this year with Dansby Swanson, the shortstop. And with their second pick, they went with a very good left-hand pitcher, Alex Young from TCU, who started tonight for the Horned Frogs against Texas A&M. And he struck out 10 in six and a third innings. Here's Yasmani Grandel. Now, the deal there was that uh, Vandy, with their win, got back to Omaha. They clinched a trip to the College World Series. TCU has to win their game tonight to get there as well. And right now, they're tied up with the Yankees. 4-4 in the 12th inning. In a game that Young started. Real good college players from two of the best programs. Guys that are far along in their development, so hopefully should be here soon. Three and zero oh on Grandal, who walked and scored in the fourth, doubled and scored his last time. Amateur draft. Rick Mundy was the very first pick out of ASU. Told a great story on the big board here at Dodger Stadium before the game how he was in uniform with the Sun Devils waiting to play at Rosenblatt Stadium, waiting for the game before theirs to get over so they could play. And he found out this was back in the days before internet or phones or anything, electricity. Color TV. Yeah. 
And uh, he heard from uh, either a UPI or an AP stringer uh, somehow, telegraph or something, found out that Rick had been the number one pick in the draft and uh, told him about it while he was sitting in the bleachers at Rosenblatt waiting to play in the College World Series. Yeah, someone sent a Raven. <laughs> Pony Express. How about that? The first guy ever picked in the first draft. And his teammate Sal Bando was taken a little bit later by the uh, Kansas City A's that year. But Sal Bando went in the sixth round. And all those great early 70s matchups between the Dodgers and the, the A's. And Monday was a Cub for a long time, too. Great broadcaster here at the Dodgers. Rondal lifts an easy fly to left center. Peralta has it. And that's the end of the seventh inning. Rick Monday, the first 1-1. It's 9-2 here in L.A. That was the Cock Kick Life High Speed Highlights. Dodgers lead the Diamondbacks 9 2. New pitcher here. For Los Angeles to start the eighth inning, the left hander JT Howell. Scoreless relief in 19 of his 21 appearances this year, including his last 18. Hasn't given up an earned run since April 14. A 0 6 3 ERA. Mike Bolsinger, the story here for the Dodgers. The former Diamondback was terrific. Two runs on three hits in seven innings. He walked two and struck out eight. Nick Ahmed will lead off the eighth. Pitcher spot due up next for the D-backs. Or oh, pardon me, Peralta's up next. Pitcher spot now fourth after the double switch. So Ahmed, Peralta, and Enciarte, eight, nine, and one. Nick walked and scored his last time up. He's 0 for 1. The Diamondbacks has got to figure out this ballpark. Swept here in a previous visit, beginning of May. Return trip 9 to 2. And this is the way things have gone lately, and this is uh, going into tonight. It's going to look even uglier tomorrow. Just got to figure it out. Certainly, a lot of it has to do with uh, the teams that the Dodgers have run out here over the last couple of years. They've had some pretty good ball players and uh, some pretty good pitching staffs. But just the law of averages would tell you that the Diamondbacks should win more than two out of 12 in this ballpark. Only four and a half back of the Dodgers in the division. This is uh, not a runaway. Starting a long California road trip here. Three in LA, three in San Francisco, then back here to LA for two in Anaheim. Eight games in nine days. So two to Ahmed. Been 
really frustrating fact is that they haven't seen Kershaw or Granke here at Dodger Stadium this year and still struggling to score runs. And Frias goes tomorrow and Brett Anderson, the lefty, who's uh, had a really good year for LA, pitches Wednesday. Kershaw was brilliant in his start Saturday against the Cardinals. They had a four game series. That was the only game against St. Louis. The Dodgers won. Off to that third base side. Kind of landed funny on his right foot that time as he leaped over to the third base side of the field. Two and two. The strikeout. No way. Here's Peralta. Nick's arguing that he got a piece of that ball. Should have been a foul tip. Or foul ball, rather. Tip's going to come out and see what's going on just to make sure Nick doesn't do anything to get himself rejected from this game. David Peralta. Change up in the dirt. Ball hit right off the front of home plate. Well, here's Peralta, who was double switched into the ball game. Dodgers will put the shift on the right hand side. Took over in the sixth inning. David, 259 and five homers. He's got 27 RBIs. He's never hit a ton in this ballpark. Three for 19 career at Dodger Stadium. And he's down 0 2. This guy's good. Yeah, he's got good stuff. Nasty late breaking slider. A lot of downward movement on that pitch. He's got a really good straight change up, and he's smart enough to keep his fastball out of the middle of the plate most of the time. Well, a chance for David to get an at bat against the lefty, something that uh, has been the last part of his game to come around at this level. Said that was a big reason he went to play winter ball in his native Venezuela during the offseason. Played 55 games down there, looking for at bats against lefties. One two pitch. Diamondback Live post game show follows our ball game. Reaction from the clubhouse. To first, Gonzalez, Howell covers two down. Brings up Ender and Ciarte. Diamondbacks tonight have only three hits. Ender has two of them. Ender and Ciarte. A pair of singles, he has scored a run. So Ender's now hit safely in five straight and 13 of 15. And Howell knocked that one down. J.P. Howell makes a terrific play to win the inning. Well, he was tripping on the mound earlier in the inning. Hit the dirt that time, but made the play to get in Ciarte. Bottom eight coming up. Diamondbacks trail it 9-2.
player of the game, former Diamondback Mike Bolsinger, who was once again terrific as a Dodger against his former team tonight. Seven innings of three-hit ball. He walked two and tied his career high with eight strikeouts. The curveball was working tonight. Boy, was it ever. It took advantage of a big strike zone by Will Little behind the plate to work that cutter around the edges of the zone as well. Alex Guerrero leads off the L.A. 8th. Some changes for the Diamondbacks. Jake Lamb takes over at first base for Paul Goldschmidt. And Pennington replaces Lamb at third. So they're getting Goldie a little bit of a blow here. Pennington hits in Goldschmidt's spot, third in the order. And Lamb moves from third to first. Guerrero launches that one to center field. AJ. Tomorrow and Wednesday, fans, the D-backs continue this series with the Dodgers. Coverage begins 16, at 6.30 Andre on Eager. both those nights right here on Fox Sports Arizona. Robbie Ray tomorrow. Boy, does he look good so far in two big league starts for the Diamondbacks. Takes on Carlos Frias. And then Wednesday, Jeremy Hellickson has been on a roll lately. Faces lefty Brett Anderson. One down for Ethier. It was two for three, a single and a homer. He's driven in four. There's Owens at second. Two down. All right, partner, explain this to me. Oh, boy. 1934, this day in baseball history, the Reds became the very first team in Major League Baseball to travel in no an bad. airplane. Number 11. Their general manager, Jimmy Larry Rons. McPhail, arranged for 19 of his players to fly on a plane to Chicago. What happened to the other six guys? They have to hitchhike? Did they have 25 man rosters then? I think they did. Maybe, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe they chose not to fly the whole team to save some money. I don't know. Maybe there were only 19 seats available on the plane. The rest were on standby. <laughs> They're still waiting. <laughs> Jimmy Rollins. Well, Larry McPhail was very progressive. Remember, yeah. he was the first guy to put lights up yep. at Old Crosley Field. So um, that's interesting that he was the first guy to figure out, hey, we should fly to these games. Yeah. Because players were taking the trains well, up even through the 50s, right? Trains and buses, yeah. Mm. Until these guys moved out here, and then everybody had to fly. And the landscape of baseball. Remember, baseball, the westernmost outpost for the major leagues used to be St. Louis. Right. So everybody just took the trains everywhere. But uh, Walter O'Malley moved the team out here after the 57 season. The Giants came out as well. And suddenly it was coast to coast. Lamb and Ramirez. So a quick one, two, three, eighth. Sends us to the ninth inning. Here's what's next. Brought to you by CenturyLink. Coming up for the Diamondbacks. A.J. Pollock. A two-run double his last time out.
and you can fill out your 2015 insurance MLB All-Star Game ballot right now at dbacks.com slash vote. Voting this year only online. It's available on your computer. You can vote on your tablet or your phone. You can vote up to 35 times a day at dbacks.com slash vote. Get A.J. in there. He deserves it. New pitcher for the Dodgers. As they say, winter is coming, so send your Ravens. Here's Josh Raven. They've looked all over the Seven Kingdoms for bullpen help, and Raven makes his third appearance of the year. A lot of Game of Thrones references there. Yeah, maybe. I don't know what any of that means. <laughs> By the old gods and the new. I know Josh Raven throws extremely hard. Limited action, but his average fastball has already been 97 and a half miles an hour as Chris Heisey takes over in left field. He'll hit ninth. Pitcher spot uh, is now sixth in the yellow room. AJ, a two run double his last time up, one for three. Hey, we got to give it up to uh, an unsung hero, and this is no one's going to notice this unless we reference it, which is why we're doing that right here. But what a job by JC Ramirez, Bob. I mean, he really did help out the bullpen. He worked three scoreless innings in relief of Ruby, retired all nine he faced. And tied a season high with 39 pitches. Ramirez threw 33 against the Mets yesterday and 39 in three scoreless innings here tonight. Great job. Well, he did an outstanding job. Only one punch out uh, of his nine outs. The rest of weak contact, easy ground balls, and lazy fly balls. You're right. Raven throws hard. 98. Consistent 98. Made his major league debut in the second game of uh, the doubleheader Tuesday against the Rockies. Faced one batter. Guess what? Struck him out. DJ LeMahieu. And with that strikeout, also got his first big league win. He pitched at AAA Oklahoma City this year. And a 2 2 5 ERA. It's 20 innings and 30 strikeouts. They figured, get him up here. Three and two on Pollock. Pennington on deck. So far in this at bat, he's thrown 98, 100, and then 398s. Here's the 3 2. 98 is driven to center field. Peterson wants it down. Been a night for former D-back pitchers. Mike Bolsinger was terrific, and there's another one. Brandon McCarthy next to another former Diamondback, Brett Anderson. Number four, He'll start Wednesday. Brandon coming off Tommy John surgery. This is our first look at Josh Raven out there on the mound. As we've mentioned already, throws extremely hard, has a slider to go with it. And I think I figured it out. Oh, it's it. Nine years in the minor leagues, his record was 17 and 47 with an ERA over five. And you look a little deeper into the numbers, he had seasons where he walked more than he struck out with that 98 mile an hour heater. As a starter, ever? Uh, some of it was as a starter. Up until the 2012 season, he hasn't made a start since then. The man appears to be an issue. I can tell you from my scouting reports that velocity is not. <laughs> he does throw hard. Penny at 159. He's got four hits in his last 39 at bats. This year, one for ten as a pinch hitter. Started Saturday's win over the Mets and went 0 for three with a couple of strikeouts. Drives this one to the right field corner. That gets down in front of Ethier and Cliff will stop at first with a one out single. Pennington, a former first round pick, he was an A and M Aggie. 
first overall selection back in 05 by the Oakland A's. And shooting for the Diamondbacks, number eight, Jared Saltalamacchia. So here's the pitcher spot, and Jared Saltalamacchia will hit for Ramirez. Salty batting 132 for the year, two homers. And in seven games with the Diamondbacks so far, two doubles and a home run. Jared got tightened up a little bit, got that haircut. He had some long, shaggy curls hanging out uh, the bottom of the batting helmet uh, when we left Arizona. I am tight now. Here goes Pennington. There's a strike to Salt to Lamaki. He'll take second base. Defensive indifference is the scoring there. That's salty. I don't know if that helmet's going to fit now. on Jared Saltalamaki's <laughs> hairstyle. Let's go down to our uh, style expert, Jody Jackson. Oh, yeah, breaking news. I said, why the change? He basically just said it's a lot easier, and I use less product now in my hair. So uh, <laughs> it's pretty simple, guys. Oh, the product. Yes. One last thing to pack. Now, Peralta, that's hair product, man. He got that kind of half buzz cut, half mohawk thing going. Kind of spike it up here right now. So roll order into the shift. Kendrick from the outfield grass. Pennington into third two outs. Let's see if we can see the new boss. Number 19. What's left of it? Got the white walls going around the back there. <laughs> I don't think anybody, BB, will ever touch uh, Matt Davidson. Oh, Remember, he used to look like Aquaman. That was professional Moss. Yeah. There's the new look right there. Looks like an ultimate fighter now. Well, it seems appropriate for the weather here in L.A. It was just as hot here as it was in Phoenix. Yeah, man, everyone's yelling at us and when humid. we showed up. And humid. It was hot down there on the field. Jake Lamb still looking for that first hit since his return from the D.L. Coming back live post game show right after the ball game. Same two teams tomorrow night. Coming back live pregame show starts at 6:30. Robbie Ray against Carlos Frias. Oh and two. Great job by J.C. Ramirez. He gave Chip Hale three innings tonight. Save some arms. He retired all nine Dodgers he faced. 38 pitches. Great job. Oh, and two to Lamb. Base hit. Pennington will score. Makes it a 9 3 ball game. Welcome back, Jake Lamb. Yes, His indeed. First base hit after coming off the DL. Number 16. Chris it's Owens. a knock and a stake. Gears it up for that 98 mile an hour heater and buggy whip pulls it into right field. Well, good thing that CO gets another at bat here because he's 0 for 3 so far. So he's got an 11 game hitting streak, a career high on the line right here. There goes Lamb. He'll take second on defensive and defense. One one on Owings. CO. Even for the first time, I think he took something off that time. Break the ball there and so too. Forty two thousand one hundred sixty seven were here tonight. Rollins a three run homer in the 
fourth. Ethier a three-run shot in the fifth. And CO strikes out. The Dodgers win the ball game 9-3. Take a break for now. Be back to wrap it up from Dodger Stadium. Diamondback Live post game show follows as well. Be back on the first game of this series and this road trip. Ball nine to three. Back from LA after this.